Zone 7 injuries, dorsal wrist injuries. The repaired tendon lie in a synovial line tunnel beneath the extensor retinaculum. Although the extensor retinaculum may be incised to allow exposure and repaired primarily or by means of relaxing incisions. It is usually also possible to preserve sufficient retinaculum to prevent bostringing while excising the retinacular portion over the repair site to prevent adhesions. Tendon lacerations frequently retract into the forearm, and patients should be advised that counter incisions in the forearm or longer extensions of the original incision may be required to retrieve retracted proximal stumps. Core sutures of 3 to 0 or 2 to 0 diameter and of 5 to 0 circumferential cross stitch may be added at the surgeon's discretion. Postoperative splinting with the wrist in extension and the MP and IP joints free is done for wrist extensor lacerations for four weeks followed by active range of motion, and finger extensors are splinted with the MP joints in extension and IP joints free. Dynamic extension splinting in well-motivated patients. Chronic injuries and ruptures in Zone 7. Non-displaced distal radius fractures may be associated with late rupture of the EPL tendon. The cause for this rupture is unclear, but it has been suggested that extravasation of blood and fractured debris into a tight third dorsal compartment may constrict the EPL and lead to late attritional rupture. It has been postulated that there exists a relative watershed zone of intrinsic vascular supply to the tendon beneath the extensor retinaculum, which may predispose the tendon further to rupture. The condition is usually treated by transfer of the EIP tendon to the EPL tendon with excellent results. Transfer of the extensor indicis proprius tendon to the extensor pollicis longus tendon. A transverse incision is made just proximal to the index MP joint and the tendon which is the ulnar tendon, is identified and freed up subcutaneously to the level of the wrist retinaculum. It is transected proximal to its insertion on the extensor hood. A second transverse incision is made overlying the EIP tendon, just distal to the retinaculum and the tendon is withdrawn to this location. A third incision is made longitudinally overlying the epal tendon at the metacarpal level, close to the MP joint. The EIP tendon is passed subcutaneously to the EPL tendon, with care taken not to ensnare any EDC tendons in the passage. The EIP tendon is sutured in a pulv taft weave with several 3 to 0 non-absorbable sutures. The repair is tensioned with the wrist in 30 degrees of extension and at the thumb in extension at the carpom to carpal and IP joints and in neutral at the MP joint. A thumb speaker splint is placed full-time for four weeks. 
at which time active motion is allowed with a removable thumb speaker splint for another two weeks. Zone 8 injuries, distal forearm injuries. An 18-year-old man was water skiing and received a rope burn when the boat took off unexpectedly while the tow line was wrapped around his forearm. The wound was debrided. All nerves and tendons were intact. The wound was loosely closed. After one year, hyperextension of the index finger only when the wrist was flexed. Extension of the index finger at the PIP and DIP joints with MP flexion of the index finger. Flexion of the index finger fully with the wrist in extension. What was the diagnosis? Answer. Zone 8 injury of the EIP muscle and tendon type EIP. Treatment. Surgical exploration revealed a fibrotic EIP muscle and tendon. The EIP was excised with full motion obtained. Injuries in Zone 8 involve the musculotendinous junction. When repair to the muscle fascia is flimsy, a side-to-side -side tendon transfer may be the best option. Zone 9 Injuries Proximal Forearm Injuries Zone 9 is the site of the muscle bellies of the extensor tendons in the proximal half of the forearm. Loss of finger or wrist extension may result from muscle, transection or nerve injury, or both. Surgical exploration muscle. Belly wounds may be repaired with multiple figure of eight sutures. Tendon grafting to overcome defects in this area, and used the palmaris longus or toe extensors as graft material. Indications for this procedure are laceration of two or more muscle, bellies with laceration of at least 50% of the muscle substance. Epimysial repair with interrupted figure of eight sutures using absorbable sutures. Mild to moderate extensor lag of one or more digits may be considered for extension splinting for three to four weeks, as this may allow muscle healing and return to function. Nerve injuries to the posterior intestinal nerve may be difficult to localize and repair in the substance of the muscle bellies. Chronic nerve injuries may be treated with tendon transfers.